Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. A lot of people like to have a charm with the baby shoes. So today we are going to look into how to build these shoes. Are you ready? Let's get started. First of all, you need to have a good idea for what you are looking for. I'm going to use a rectangle tool and with the um, center, it's click and center will be my zero point. I kind of eyeball it the size for what I want and I like to use the conic corner. The second thing we want to do, if I try to edit this because this is the degree two curve, so it will have that kink over there. So I would suggest to rebuild this curve first. And we're gonna come over here, you can see the original count is eight. I want to build it into 10 and um, the degree is three. That is the key things we want to emphasize here. And then now if I turn on a control point, I can kind of uh, scale this down to be more egg shape there without having any of the kink. All right, so now we finish the um, top view. We're gonna coming over to the side view. On the side view, I'm going to freehand to draw what I feel the profile is going to be for these shoes. And after that, you can kind of edit it, make sure that it's the shape that you want. Then the third one I'm going to do is I'm going to using the arc tool and snapping into quadrant here and snapping into the quadrant there and also snapping into the top for intersect. Now I have something like that. I can keep editing this curve if you feel like this is not a profile that I like. As you can see, that has a kink over there on my right view. So that doesn't look really well. I'm going to go back and before I do anything, I want to rebuild this curve as well. And that's rebuilt into the degree three. And now if I am trying to uh, move it, make it a little bit puffier and even coming out like that, that will work better. All right, so to creating the surface, what we wanted to do is we want to split this guy by this curve. So now we have those curve in one direction and having this curve in other direction. The command we are going to use is called curve network. We're gonna choose one, two, three, and also this is cross section and we will get a really, really nice uh, egg looking things. All right. A lot of time when you have all the point coming into one point and you try to creating the thickness by offset, you may not have a solid. Let me show you what that mean here. If I'm going to offset this guy going into inside for one millimeter, you're going to see that they're coming into this point right there. So sometimes uh, it doesn't look too nice to me if I'm going to able to see the button. If you're going to hide it, it may not be a big problem. Let me go back one more time. If we offset solid equal no, and the same distance right there, you're going to see it has that point there. So sometimes if it coming into the point, instead of using the offset, I will simply just making a copy and make it smaller. And I'm going to pick up both of these surface and that's using the um, align to the bottom. And so to bring that one to the bottom. So now you can see that because I didn't use the offset and they all still nice and flat. In order to create the surface in between, we are going to use the loft command. It's gonna loft from here to here and loft from here to here. Okay, so now let's go ahead to join together. I always like to check on the um, property on every step and make sure that this step, it is still in solid. Okay, so the second things that I like to do is I like to have the button and I'm going to use the duplicate edges and we're gonna dupe edge of this button and join together. With that curve that we just dupe edge, uh, we wanna go straight to create whatever thickness there. And I'm going to use the faded edges and we are going to create something like 0.75 or one millimeter. And we're gonna select these edges there. 
All right, so now I have something nice and rounding. We just need to have an opening on the top. I'm going to uh, create a cylinder and somewhere about this size for about that tall and bring in the cylinder down, something like that. Maybe tilt it a little bit. So what we wanted to do is cutting an opening and you can keep adjusting to make it either bigger or smaller, depends on how you like the shoes to look like. So once you find a position that you like, go ahead to use the bowling difference, this one out of this one. So then we will have the uh, hollow shape in there. To make the decoration, we first want to pipe this edges there to be whatever fitting into your design. So now I have, you know, the opening with the round puffy edges. And then we are going to coming into the top view to do other decoration. So coming over here, I like Conley Corner. It's gonna use it one more time with the center. And I kind of eyeball it like how big I want my decoration to be. And coming something like that. Since it is really close to the surface, so I'm going to pick up uh, the curve and project it to this surface. So you can see project to whatever behind it, we just need to delete the one on the bottom. So the second curve I'm going to bring a little bit further. And instead of using the project, I'm going to using uh, the pull. So we're going to pull it to this surface. And if you're interested to know what the project, what's the difference between project and pull, there's a video on the right top corner right here, and then you can click on it. It will bring you to that video later on. So now I have this. Um, all I need to do is pick up those two curves. We want to pipe it something small, and that will be the pipe that we are using. And then very last one, I want those two uh, shoelaces going to some sort of a tube looking things. So what I like to do is I'm going to use the curve from the midpoint. And to making a curve is roughly about this long. And before I actually pipe it, I do want this curve to be pull to the surface. After that, I can pipe it. I want to pipe it flat and with something like this. So you can cover both of the curve that I have there. It doesn't look good on the render if you have a sharp edges. So let's go ahead to uh, fit the edges. Point one, something a little bit rounder. After you put the jump ring on, they are ready for casting. If you find my video is helpful, please consider joining the, with this join button there. Once you click on the join, it will tell you to the membership program to join. That is support my passion to help many other people like you to learn jewelry design. I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching.